Mm. It's it's a broken household, and that's what it was, and that's what it was supposed to be. And you didn't but, have the information even how to achieve it. Not at all. So now, now that I'm in a place to break that chain and create mm -hmm. something different, right. I'm giving my kids a different understanding of what family is and what values and commitment are that they can follow. I'm trying to create new mm -hmm. for this next generation. I'm doing mm -hmm. my job. Mm -hmm. and if I didn't do my job, then I'm putting them in a position to repeat what the fuck I just did. So you got to do your part. I can say I'm doing mine. I'm thankful. I'm blessed to be doing it. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm truly, truly thankful for the ability to, to really realize. Mm. You know what I mean? To really to wake up, to wake up, to wake up and realize. I'm saying, sure. Kev is you. Yeah. What I, that's uh. What's what's been the biggest trauma from your childhood? I was, what's been the biggest trauma for you to shake from your childhood that you haven't like that you're struggling with? I'm gonna keep calling. Listen, my daughter gonna. Keep calling, she waiting. So I'm gonna oh. give you this when I got around. Okay. Side. Uh, the so biggest, all, I think I, the I biggest, one, one what, yeah, give me the, yeah, that one last one. What's the, the biggest, biggest thing? What's I think been the biggest, biggest thing, trauma for you? The biggest trauma that you struggle with is just saying, all right, look, uh, I don't want to be what I'm familiar with. I don't want to be what my father was. And my dad are cool. I love my dad, but I don't want to be that. If I am that, mm. then then what are the products that are going to come from that? I know what that world looks like. I have to not repeat history the trauma is seeing the movie i saw that movie i know how it ends don't be in that movie be better than that is there is there is there is there, is there a therapist in the, the heart home is there a no. therapist in the heart home no, no. but it's not, so it's you not all, self, all, all self all self but that doesn't mean that we knock it and if we ever got to the point where we didn't need it we would embrace it so brother, I, I, love I love you man i love you go to the family i love you I brother love you i love you i love you i love you i love you kev this is great Kev's. man love you hey this man listen great. man Listen, man, I wasn't going to play with you. I wasn't going right. to play with your time, man. We ain't going to do that. Listen, right, give the wife, give the kids, give everybody a hug, respect. My man. I'm love you. Done. All right, big man. Oh, man. Mm, 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 mm. Wow. Y'all feeling this or what? Y'all feeling this or what? Are y'all feeling this or what? Please talk to me. I need to know. Because I'm, I, I, I'm, listen, Jeff Gordon in the building. Jeff Gordon, what up, baby? Listen, let me tell you something. I'm telling you that my spirit is lifted. I feel great. Listen, a doom day. Boomy, what up, Boomy? Listen, I'm telling you right now, it's amazing. It's an amazing feeling right here. It's an amazing feeling. Listen, don't let, don't let that trauma that you went through in your childhood, you know what I mean, dictate, I'm telling you, your reality today. Because listen, we can rewrite that thing. We can rewrite that. You just got to want it. You got to do the work. Stevie G, what up? I'm telling you, I'm telling you, next up, the African king of comedy, you know he's a wild kid. He's wild. He's a wild boy. He's a wild boy. Jamal, what up? I feel good. I feel good all over, like Stephanie Mills said. I'm, I feel good all over. Dougie Fresh. Dougie Fresh in the building. The greatest entertainer, Dougie Fresh, is in the building. Give him hearts, y'all. He's at money. What's up? I feel great. I feel good. Hey Patty, I'm hey Patty, I'm sorry, Patty. I'm Pat, I'm sorry. Oh, Patty. Oh man. Oh man. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, Jeff. Exactly, Jeff. Let go of the anger. Let go of the anger, Jeff. Absolutely. There's a lot, a lot of people walking around with anger. Hey, hey Bilal, what's up? A lot of people walk around with anger. And they and they listen, and they want hurt people, hurt people. That's just what it is. It's just what it is. John Life from what's up, baby? What's up? We listen. Listen, the African king of comedy, y'all know, y'all know, listen, you know Mike is a little wild child, so I don't know how Mike going to come in. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that he come in, you know what I'm saying, again, and carry that love, you know what I mean, but Mike's a little wild, he's a little wild, you know what I mean, hopefully he won't say nothing to do anything to get him deported, you know what I mean, but we're going to have some fun, you know. Tiffany, what up, Tiffany? Hey, listen, I just feel good. I hope y'all, I hope y'all enjoyed it. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Doug, what up, Doug? Hey, Doug, why don't you tap until Mike come in, Doug? Come on, tap in. Give me, give me, give me, give me some feeling. Hey, Doug, come on, tap in, Doug. Tap in with your brother real quick. Jeff Gordon, tap in real quick. Oh, Mike is here. Okay, Mike is here. Mike is here. Here we go. Mike Blackson's here. Here we go. Here we go. He's here. Here we go. I want the same love. 
I need the same. I need the same love. Give Mike the love, y'all. Give him the love, baby. Give Mike the love, baby. Give Mike the love, baby. Give him the love, baby. Michael Banks is in the building. Give him the love, y'all. Give him the love. Give him the love. My nigga. Hey, hey, hey. What's up? What's up, brother? Turn it What's up, up King? Brother. What's up, King? What's up, King? What's up, King? Hey, listen, before we start, this is what we do. We give you your flowers, we give you your love. Hey, listen, everybody give give give, give my brother Mike love. Give him the hearts. 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 Celebrate him. Celebrate our African, the original man. Celebrate the original man from the motherland. Celebrate him. Give him love, y'all. Give him love. Give him love. You gave it to DI, you gave it to Kev. Give him love. Give our brother some love. You know what I mean? He out here doing his thing. I see Southwest Philly in the house. Southwest Philly is definitely out. North Philly is in the house. South Philly is in the house. Southwest is in the house. Germantown is in the house. West Oak Lane is in the house. Mount Airy is in the Mount house. Mount Airy's in the house. Absolutely. Delaware Chicago. Is in the house. Delaware's in the house. Chester's Camden, in the house. New Jersey. Camden, New Jersey's in the house. Okay? Norristown's in the house. Jenkintown's in the house. We here, baby. Chicago, Detroit, LA, Africa, Australia, China. We here, man. We here. Jeff Gordon's in the building, too. Jeff Gordon's in the building. It's a great day with Jeff Gordon in the building. Jeff Gordon's in the building. That's what's up. Jeff Gordon in the building. Hey, man, listen, man. Mikey, mm -hmm. let me ask you a question, man. Let me ask you a question. How did you actually obtain that, that, that bug, that comedy bug, coming from, because you came from Africa to the States, mm -hmm. right? Did you come straight to the Southwest Philadelphia? No. Nah, I, I spent my first two years in, um, maybe two, first two and a half years in Newark, New Jersey. Okay. That was my stopping ground. Okay. Came to Newark, about 11 years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, was it 13? God damn, between 11 and 13. I don't remember. Okay, okay. Um, landed, it was, I know it was cold. It was like April. I know it was like April. It was a cold okay. time in the United States. Okay. And when we landed at JFK, my mother, my mother an evangelist. All right, she, okay. I'm not sure when the, you know what evangelist is. You know what evangelist is? Yes, I, I, my, my grandma goes evangelist. And I was like, okay, I, listen, so my, what you got to know about me, I was the Austin boys. Okay, I was evangelist Austin's grandson. We used to sing our two songs, It's Gonna Rain, and my soul looked back and wondered every, every, every Sunday. Okay, I went to school. I went to church four days out of the week, Mike. So, yes, wow. I know what evangelist is. Yes, sir. Yes, okay, sir. Yes, yeah, so my mother's evangelist. My mother mm -hmm. um, had eight kids, eight children. Okay. Five boys, three girls. Okay. Now, Where'd you fall? Where'd you fall? I'm like, the, I'm the youngest son. Youngest son. Got it. I'm the youngest son. Just like Michael Jackson was the youngest son. Michael Blackson, okay. the youngest son. <laughs> The, Jack, the Jackson Five, the Blackson Five. I'm the youngest one, and I'm the one, the most talented one, I guess. <laughs> we, we do have a journey. My don't, change your, don't change your nose, though. Don't change your nose. Don't change your nose. No, nah, I can't. You can't. Don't do that, OK? Don't do that. In fact, okay? I bleached my skin as light as it gets, man. It can't get any. <laughs> I did everything. This is light as it gets. Yeah. <laughs> I bleached my skin. Look. I put an S curl and the shit ain't tape. Look. It didn't go. It's, it it, it didn't take, man. It, it, it skipped over to curl. Z curl. Z curl. Huh? It didn't work. It, uh, S didn't come in with the Z. Nothing tape. This is close. <laughs> I'm going to get to Michael Jackson, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is light as I'm going to get. This is it. This, this is, is it. I, I moved to Philly. Philly uh -huh. changed my life. Talk and about it. Talk about it. I embrace Philly so much. I'm mm -hmm. coming to Philly. It was during the summer of uh, 11th grade. It was like mm -hmm. pretty much I was going to go to 11th grade that mm -hmm. September. Mm -hmm. So I remember coming to Philly in that summer. And the reason why I even got to Philly a little bit later, because during that, earlier that summer, I was in mm -hmm. um, Jersey. Mm -hmm. I was an extra in the movie Lean On Me. Oh, wow. Yes. That's way before wow. I even thought I'd be an entertainer or doing all that stuff. Wow. I was an extra in the movie Lean On Me. Go just Google up, go to YouTube, put in Michael Blackson and lean on me, and you'll see that's my little face. That's crazy. Wow. Okay. So I remember my All mother right. and my sister moved ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, mind you, it was just me, my mom, and my two sisters in the state. The rest came later. Got it. Right? My mom, 
came to Philly. She had some friends in Philly that said, "Listen, Philadelphia mm-hmm. is better. Life is cheaper. Mm-hmm. You know, life is you get a job faster and rent mm-hmm. is cheaper." Mm-hmm. Jersey was very tough. We lived in people's basement. We lived in shelter homes. Even with her, she had a job making two fifty a week, but that wasn't enough to pay no rent and do nothing. Wow. We moved to Philly that summer. Got a row house. At I don't want to send anybody to this address, but this is the address I live. First address, 5503 Regent Street. Wow. You know where wow. Regent is? Uh, yeah, my, my, my girlfriend lives on Regent Street. I live on Regent wow. Street. Wow. Yeah. Right. 5500. On, on, right on that 100, too. On that 100. Wow, 5500. On that 100. Yeah, because uh, Lennon, 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 Lennon uh, and, Len, and, uh, and her brother, uh, Anthony, Tony. Yes, they lived on that block. I actually lived on that block. I, when I, when I, unfortunately, I had a. I shot myself in 85, so I had to move in with them. So I lived on that block for about a year and a half. You did a plastic of Burris, motherfucker? Out the fucking yeah, man, yourself. yeah. I did. I, hey, man, I had, a, I had a little run in and I pulled the gun out and it went off on me, man. Hey, man. You didn't shoot a dick off or nothing, right? Uh, no, well, that, we ain't gonna talk about that on there. You know, we ain't gonna talk about that. No. It's, it's in tech. Well, I got, I got seven kids after, after I shot myself, so obviously hey, I didn't shoot that off. You know, usually when you shoot one ball, the other ball gets stronger. <laughs> so you, you wasn't really balling this whole time. That was definitely balling. Definitely balling. And when you but, argue, you, ain't, you never had a boss to argue with nobody because you only had one ball. <laughs> Nigga shot his own dick. But hey, that's your problem, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. You know, it's my problem. So, yeah, my so problem. 55 mm-hmm. went to the region. She was the first place right. I lived. First, it was three bedroom row house. My first mm. time having my own room. Wow. Right? At this time, I'm 15 years old. Mm. 16. 16. Mm. Mm-hmm. 16 years old. I'm going to. Mm-hmm. Um, I was 16 years old because I think I was going to 11th grade or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, I finally got my own room. First time I went look for a job in Philly at 15, 16, I got a job. Where'd you go? I got a job at Domino's Pizza on South Street. Got it. 901 South Street was the address. Domino's I know exactly Pizza. where it's at. I know exactly at where it's at. 15 years, 15 years old. Because I think I, mm-hmm. I was a little bit ahead. I was ahead in school for some mm-hmm. reason. Because mm-hmm. what happened is... Back in Africa, when I left, my stepfather, who my mother married to, the last guy my mother, my mother married to, they had my younger sister, who is now mm-hmm. 35 years old. Got it. He was, uh, he owned a school back, mm-hmm. in, back in, um, in Liberia. He owned a okay. school. Okay. So um, coming to America, you try to pretty much, you, you know, like back home, I, my mother traveled so much. I could never tell you I was in the first. I went to first, second, third, fourth. I didn't. I didn't go to every grade. I didn't. I remember being in the first grade. I remember first grade. Never remember second grade. I remember third grade. Don't remember ever going to fourth grade. Don't remember ever going to fifth grade. Uh, sixth grade. Never did seventh grade. So were right. you testing? Were you testing when you got to the school, the new schools? Were you just testing? Well, when I got to, when I was, the thing about it, I, I think we, I think we worked a little bit harder back home. Got it. I think we're a little bit ahead on certain subjects. Got it. You, got you it. know, and the main subject is English and math. Got it. You know, there's everything else you could learn and you catch up whatever. But English and math is, you know, and I think we're a little bit ahead in Africa. We had on America on English and math. So when I was coming oh. to America, that's how I knew I was 13 when I was coming. I was coming to America at 13 years old because I mm-hmm. remember that because uh, my my father, my stepfather who owned the school knew that mm-hmm. in America, um, 13 years old means eighth grade. Got it. So wow. he made me a transcript for the eighth grade. Wow. Mind you, from you hadn't went to school. To you hadn't went to school. Went to, huh? You hadn't went to school from from that point from from first grade to eighth grade. You had with the school third grade leading. Well, no, 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 no. I did. Yeah. Like I said, I, I mean, I, a few, I didn't, I skipped. Skip. Got you it. know, like I'm going in the first grade. And I remember when I started school again, I just said, hey, look, they said, what grade you in? Um, third grade, whatever. And they'll put Got you it. there. Got so it. a lot of grades, I, did, I never, like I said, out of the, from first to eighth, at least half of them, I never, I, I don't remember going to those grades. Because we travel so much. My mother traveled to different countries across West Africa preaching the gospel. Wow. Oh, you were, oh, so so when you were I, traveling when I was, with her? Huh? Yeah, we're traveling with your mom. Travel my mom most of the time, and we just, we just, we just never kept up with everything. So yeah. when I came to America, I think the last grade I completed prior to me going to eighth was I'm going to the sixth grade in, in Africa. Mm. Mm. I'm going to the sixth grade, and I got to here. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. 13 years old. 
my step pop why in Africa knew in America because he owned the school that we went to. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. He knew that 13 years old is eighth grade. So he made me a transcript, a transcript for the eighth grade. So when I came to America, I'm gonna I'm going to North New Jersey and I, I gave him my transcript for eighth grade and I went to eighth grade and still had A's and B's. That's so did you find did you find the work easy, like really easy? Or was it not no, really challenging you know at all? No, you know what? No, it just I was I was just big on studying. In Africa, we prioritize education like more than anything else. I mean, I can I'm gonna be in the eighth grade and I see kids come to class late and not paying attention. Right. In Africa, it's like a privilege. We look forward to going to school because we want to learn. Yeah, no, that's I mean, real. School meant the whole world to us. You mm -hmm. know, in America, you come to eighth grade, you if you know everything, you're considered a nerd, and kids beat you up because you're yes. nerd. And after yes. girls give you pussy because you got A's and B's. <laughs> in America, they fuck you up. In America, All you get day. fucked. All day. All in day. That's no, right. real. Africa, you get fucked for getting A's and B's. In America, they, you, you get fucked up. Oh, my goodness. So how so did you deal with that? How did you deal with that? How did you deal huh? with that? How did you deal with that staying locked on, on, your, on, your, on your education, but at the same time trying to avoid getting your behind kicked by the Americans? By the, by the Americans. I actually got my ass jumped once mm. because I had A's and B's. That was my first, my first experience with bullying. I mean, that was my second because my first bullying experience was just niggas roasting me every day, every fucking day. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even know I was dark skin until I came to America. <laughs> what the fuck you laughing at, nigga? I was the lightest one in my village. They called me Redbone, but that's besides the point. Charlie, okay. I had right. nobody I was dark skin till I came here. Mike, come on, Mike. Come on, Mike. Let, let me ask. Did you think he was light skin? Did you think he was light no. skin? No. Oh, you didn't have a complexion. You didn't know. We didn't you didn't have identify. Right. Got it. Got it. We didn't okay, say we didn't look at each other as blind or dark. We just looked at each other as warm back home. I mean it's got different it. now where it's it's much different. America has ruined the world. Wow. America became like I'm not sure you, I'm sure you know much about the whole Adam and Eve and eating the apple. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so absolutely. America to me was like, you ate that apple, and then all of a sudden your eyes could see things you weren't supposed to see. Wow. That's like what, so I came to America, and I remember the first time I had experience, with, the first time I realized I was dark skin, right? 13 years old, I'm outside, um, you know, talking to other American kids. Mind you, I got an accent, I'm dark skin, so everything I said. A thick accent, me. thick accent, thick. Very thick, thick as hell. Yeah. And, and, and the crazy thing about it, back then when I came in the, in the late 80s, whatever, it was like being, being from another country was not in style. Right. right. Uh, it just in the past, in the, maybe the late 90s, early 90s, where everybody was looking for identity. Mm. You know, Jamaicans were claiming. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't make when, it, when it wasn't cool. It to wasn't be, cool yeah, to be a foreigner. It wasn't cool. Right. It wasn't cool. It wasn't cool to be dark skinned. It right. wasn't cool to be a foreigner. Right. You know, Nappy hair was not cool. Everybody no. had Jerry curls. You had Jerry curl, Charlie. Yeah, uh, had S curl. Had S curl. Had S curl. S curl. S curl. Right. Yeah, you wasn't a sex I, symbol then. I can tell you had an S curl. That's why your shit's all gone down, nigga. Every nigga with a Jerry curl, S curl from back in the day have no hair. S curl. I, I had a, listen. I did, no, no. I had a. I had a texture. I had a texture. That's what I had. You live it in just long enough to curl up, right? Not too That's long. That's it. That's it. That's you it. You don't want it to be too smooth. Absolutely. Just enough to curl up. Just enough to make, to make it, no, the lie say I got Indian in my family. That's it. Yeah, enough for Indian. Nigga, I had so much in my head. I had Indian, Puerto Rican, <laughs> and two Mexicans in my family. <laughs> oh, my so, goodness. I came, I came to America at the wrong time. Right. All right, this is how I realized I was dark skinned, okay? I must have put on some kids, right? And some kid come up like, damn, you black. I said, well, of course, we are all black. <laughs> he, said, he, said, he said, no, nigga, you black as shit. <laughs> that's what you do? That's why I put that on it? That's what, he, that's what I'm like, what do you mean? And he looked, put his hand next to my hand. You see, I'm like, oh, my God. So from there on, I became self-conscious about my darkness. You know, everywhere you go, people just come, like, even somebody that's a shade lighter than me, Give you a complex. Which call me black as fuck. I'm like, nigga, you almost look like me. Me and you are the same niggas. Is that no? <laughs> you black as fuck. So then, that was the first bully. Second bully was, I'm on my eighth grade, A's and B's. I guess the word got around. That's one of the niggas that got A's and B's. 
Damn. I remember going on the bus. I remember some kid from the projects coming behind me and sucker punching the shit out of me. What? Dead serious. I'm out. Nobody ever know this. This is the first time I'm ever talking about this. Come Suck on, up. come on, Mike. Come on, Mike. This is like, come this on, is Mike. New Jersey. This is, this is Newark. Oh, Newark. Okay. That, yeah. No, 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 no. Never had a problem in Philly. Okay. Philly's okay. been like, to me, Philly's been like, I felt like I was back at home. Philly made me feel so at home. Wow, because that's great. The main reason was by the time I and got that's to why Philly, you embrace it. Philly embraced me much better. But by the time I got to Philly, it was different. I've been in America for three years. I already knew everything. I knew what got it took to fit in. Got it. From your clothing, because that's another wow. thing I got bullied in was my clothes. That's why. What, I, see, what were you? What were you wearing? Life, what were you wearing? What were you wearing? What were nigga. you wearing before, Mike? What were you wearing before, Mike? My mother bought my sneakers in Pathmark. Uh -huh. <laughs> Pathmark was a grocery store. Okay. I know Pat Mark. Absolutely. My, my, I, my mother bought chicken next to my sneakers. My, I, <laughs> I wore flavor, chicken flavor sneakers. That's what I wore to school. And didn't know. And didn't have no clue that you thought you, you, thought you was jigging. I mean, I thought I was a shit. My sneaker was called in action. All right? <laughs> and the only reason I knew it was in action, because once they told me I was black as shit, now I know everything. I got to read everything that I'm buying. So I'm going this thing. I'm like, oh, I have some in action. <laughs> I'm reading everything. My eyes are open. I hey, Mike, what kind, apple. Mike what, kind, what kind of things you got on, Mike? Nigga, in action. Brand new. In action. Never used. Brand new. <laughs> and you got, them for the, you got them from next to the chicken. Next to, the fucking, mark. Next to drumsticks at Pathmark. Oh, but you know what? It didn't matter. I was happy. That's all I knew. Right, right, right. My right. mother, the hell you expect? My mother and was two hours a week, to, and she has to pay rent and do all of that. So I remember, now back, back to, let's go back to Africa. This is mm -hmm. before I became there, before Gucci and before Versace, before materialistic stuff. Mm -hmm. Back home when I was a kid, mm -hmm. we never cared about name brand. Once again, right. we, never, we didn't care about, we didn't know our complexion. Right. We didn't know about name brands. We didn't right. care about that. We right. care about you know who got the girls back home? The smart kids, A's and B's. Wow. The kids that dress in new clothes. It didn't matter what it was. It wow. was brand fucking new. Wow. So I come to school in America, my first day of school, I got on my brand new in actions. <laughs> Why are you laughing? This shit was new. It's not used. This nigga laughing at my brand new in actions. You had your brand new. You, 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 you had your brand new in action. Brand new in actions. <laughs> brand new in actions with some. Um, I swear to God, I wish I what, had what, 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 what did you have? In, what did you have to compliment the in actions? That's what some, I know. Some church pants. Church pants with in actions on. It, some in action sneakers. Some okay. church pants and a church okay. shirt. And oh guess my. what? They're brand fucking new. <laughs> oh, Mike, you crack on my head, man. You have brand new to, and so ashes to, on, a church I, pants on, a church shirt. Church shirt, church pants. You clean. You clean. I'm clean. To me, uh -huh. I'm about to get all the American women today. Okay, go ahead. All the 13 year old girls are going to be on me. All of them. They belong to you. You hold the court. You're going to you shut the school down. Period. Dog. I go to school. Uh huh. Mind you, like I said, Africa, we just care about it brand new. We didn't care about what name it was. I, I walk in school, you know, everybody, this is like lunchtime. Everybody in the hallway chilling. I say, you know what? Let me come and chill on this wall with these niggas. <laughs> I can't go wrong. I, I got some brand new clothes and my. <laughs> In action, you, I'm doing it. I'm stunting on them. I'm so I go in the hallway. I'm looking. Uh -huh. around, I got an in actions. I see some niggas, some shit called Nike, right? <laughs> I see another nigga, some bullshit called Adidas. <laughs> Three niggas got on Pumas. <laughs> I'm like, nigga, I'm the only nigga with some in actions. I'm, I'm, the, co I'm, the, co I'm the coldest in the room. I have to be the different nigga. Period. 
chicken flavor in actions. Chicken flavor in actions. I got the I got the I got the latest joints, fresh. Brand fresh. new shirt. They're brand new. I was so close to leaving a tag on that bitch, but I didn't. <laughs> you were more fresh than Dougie. How about that? Man, nigga, I would if I saw Dougie Fresh, I'd be like, Dougie Fresh, fuck you. I'm shitting on you today. <laughs> Doug, you hear that, Doug? Doug on the line, too, with Mike. He on here with us. Thank you. I don't give a fuck. I oh, knew I was going to shit that day. You knew it. You knew it. Here I am. So now all the kids, like, they come up, they look at me. You know, Americans, y'all just love y'all. American kids, especially uh -huh. the black ones. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Can I tell y'all one thing? Go ahead. Y'all are mean as shit, man. <laughs> Damn, Americans. Black Americans are not nice. Hey, Mike, we're not so nice. Mean. Mike, we're not nice, man. Your we're not niggas nice. are not nice. <laughs> I'm 13 years old, man. Can I live my life? And I got my, I got on my brand new in actions, my brand new church shoes, my church pants, and my church. I'm clean. Give a man, I'm listen, clean, give, some, give man. a man some love. Give a man some love. Can you get some love? I'm in a hallway. These uh -huh. niggas, like, they come out to check everybody's sneakers. 13 uh -huh. years old. That's uh -huh. what we do. Check our sneakers. Right. Absolutely. And they check out my clothes. They come to me like, yo, who are you? Oh, I'm Michael Blackson. They're like, what are you wearing? I said, it, it, it's brand new. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be clear. Let's set the tone in the room, yeah. right? If you want to ask me, let it be known. This is not no hand me down. This is brand new. My mother brand new. Me. I bought this okay. yesterday. <laughs> it ain't been a cool 24 hours. Ain't Man, cool 24 hours. You know what I mean? I didn't even have to iron it. It was already pressed. <laughs> <I took it. laughs> oh, Mike. Come on, Mike. Come on, Mike. Come on, Mike. Come on. All okay, right, go, give it to me. Give it to me, Mike. Give it to me. All right. So, so go ahead. Give it to me. So they, um. Oh, my goodness. They're like, yeah. This like, nigga, yeah, it's brand new, but it's not Nike. It's not Adidas. I said, nigga, it's brand new. 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 <laughs> Never listen, used before. Re, listen, listen to the words that are coming out of my mouth. They're brand new. Absolutely. Man, Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead, Mike. lit my ass up. Lit my ass up. So I went a whole year of getting mm. lit up. Mm. Nine, so this eight, I went to a junior high school in, in, in Newark. So junior high is really seven, eight, and ninth. Mm. So now, ninth grade, uh, I, I you you had Bartram, you had Bartram by that time, right? You had Bartram at that time. No, no, no. I came to Bartram at tenth grade. No, okay. no, no. I went to Barringer High. That's I went to another. I, I came to eleventh grade. Got it. I, okay. I did ni eighth, ninth grade at Broadway Junior High in Newark, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. So by the time I, right before I'm about to go to tenth grade at Barringer High in, in Newark, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Um, I remember I had a summer job that summer. Selling candies door to door. So this guy, mm. he was Muslim. He used to gather like young, like kids like my age, and take us mm -hmm. to white neighborhoods Got and it. make us lie to them niggas. For what? Well, pretty much tell him I'm part of the United Youth Corps. We just trying to stay out of trouble. So we do. We sold candies for this nigga, right? Got it. We sold candies for him, and um, pretty much he will buy these candy box of candy for maybe average of fifty cents each, and we go and. And knock people do a sell this shit for three dollars and seventy five cents. Wow. And out of three seventy five, I got I get seventy five cents for each box I sell. Wow. So we we'll, right. So every weekend, he'll gather a really great guy. I, I forgot his fucking name. He had his two daughters. Mm -hmm. and he had, it was me, my sister. It was another guy. It was like five of us. We'll go to like um, rich neighborhoods in Jersey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, go door to door on the weekend, Saturday, mostly wow. Saturdays. Wow. Like some days after school, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then mostly Saturdays, we go out there and we sell candies. And I was making about $50 a week. So during the summertime, I saved up all my money. Mm -hmm. Now I went to, um, by the time I got the Barringer High, it was different. Mm -hmm. I knew mm -hmm. I had to get me some Reebok. I had to do this and I do that. Mm -hmm. I was slowly fitting in. Mm -hmm. And then, mind you, the thing about Barringer High, Barringer High was not attached to Broadway Junior High. So you had kids from like, different high schools that came to Barringer. A very okay. small amount came from from my school. So I'm like, okay, you know what? These, these kids from my school, just a few amount, I could probably get away with 
trying to just fit in a little bit. These kids, these, a lot of new kids don't know me, don't know that I, what I went through over there. You Got know, it. they don't know Got much it. about me. They say, I'm, so now, okay, I was able to buy me some new clothes, lead jeans, Wrangler jeans, first Reebok. Guess jeans, before. guess so jeans. I was slowly fitting in. Got it. You felt like it. You, you felt like it. You felt like it was coming in. You felt like it was coming in. I'm getting, I'm getting my mojo. I'm, I'm getting my mojo, little by got little. But once I got, got to Philly, it. Philly mm -hmm. was 11th grade. By the time I got, got to it. Philly, then you were turned. Was a rap. Oh, I was a shit. And then mind you, that summer I got to Philly, I got a job. I got a job at uh, Domino's Pizza. Domino's, right? So I started delivering pizzas while answering phone. I was delivering pizzas on a bike. Mm hmm Delivering pizzas on a bike, and I remember um, making like thirty dollars a night in tip. So wow. I remember that summer, that whole summer, I saved about $1,500. Wow. Saved about $1,500. Went back to, like, Jersey, New York area, went shopped, got me, you know, nice clothes. Because I wanted something totally different. When I, got, I said, when I got, I want Philly not to know where the fuck I got my clothes from. <laughs> so I went back to North Jersey and, and, and New York, went shopped. Really? Really? Yes, shopped. The only thing I got from Philly I'm going buying was like, my Dookie Fat chain. Wow. And back then... They made those chain very hollow. Even though it was right. ten karat gold, they were right. very hollow. So you could buy your yeah. nice you, chain for like you whisper, you whisper on it, it'll break. Right. Huh? I said you whisper, you whisper on it to crumble. <laughs> Nigga, let me tell you something, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, niggas were getting their chain snatched all the time because it was right. so fucking thin. Right. But niggas just come behind you like, and your shit is gone. Right. Right. Absolutely. So the whole gold Absolutely. used to have to, used to be in a club like this. Because <laughs> somebody would just come behind you and snatch, and snatch it. Absolutely. And it's gone. That's how Absolutely. hollow that shit was. Oh, and, man. And, and, you knew it was hollow because whenever a nigga come around by your chin is nice, they're like, can I touch it? Like, no, nigga, don't touch it. <laughs> don't fucking touch my chain. I don't know you. Uh, don't touch my chain. Don't touch Do my not. chain. You know that shit hollow than a motherfucker. Absolutely. Absolutely. Don't touch my fucking chain. I don't know you. Nigga, I think I'm your brother. I don't give a fuck who you are. Don't touch okay, my chain. Right, right, I'm your brother. Yeah, right. <laughs> don't touch my chain. Absolutely. Go ahead, Mike. So now, so I'm, in the, I'm in Philly now, 11th grade. I'm dressing fly. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. what I realized by then, what I realized by then is America, well, like, Americans fear what they don't know. Got it. All right? And at this Got point it. in life, this is like early 90s. So mm -hmm. early 90s, um, most of the foreigners in America were Jamaicans. Yes. Most of the foreigners were Jamaican. Very few Africans. Yes. Very few most African Africans, right. right. Most of right. Jamaicans. Most of them were dark skinned and they were Jamaicans. Mm -hmm. Right. So whenever you was dark skinned with an accent. They assumed you was Jamaican. You was, not only were you Jamaican, you were also a drug dealer. And a drug dealer, right. And yeah. a drug dealer. That's so true. Here I am, Facts. I'm in school. I'm dark skinned. I got an accent. Everybody think I'm a drug dealer. I say, you know mm. what? I'm letting people think that way. I'm going to play it up. Right. I'm going to play it up. I'm going to be there. Because they're not going to mess with me, and I'm going to get the girls. Right. And the thing about it, and the less you speak, the more they fear you. You know, if you like, if you are in a hallway during, like, lunchtime, you just quiet. I remember, I remember, I remember uh, Bartram High, all right? Mm -hmm. Like, 11th grade, like, doing a break, just in the hallway. Everybody in the hallway like this. That's how everybody wow. stood. Post, post right? it up. Post it up. Yeah. Post it up on the wall. Right. 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 Post it up. Nobody, you dark skin, you got a chain on. I'm a drug dealer. I'm a, I'm a, I said, I'm going to live up to this. They had no idea I was selling pepperoni and anchovies at the fucking Domino's. Okay. Got it. Okay. Got it. I was selling got thin it. crust and thick pieces. <laughs> Extra cheese and, um, <sighs> And green peppers. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. So I did, nigga, I did that 11, 12th grade. By 12th grade, I was so fly. I be, I would do my, if you look at my yearbook, when I graduated, I was best mm -hmm. dressed. Mike, get out of here. I, could, I was best dressed. Check my yearbook. Best dressed. Nicole, Nicole, was, Nicole was in your class. You, you, and my, you and my kid's mother went to school together. You and Nicole. Excellent. She I got to ask her. I, gotta I was ask best dressed in high school. I was best. I want yeah. best dressed. I could have won prom king, but I, my bitch ass caught the chicken pots right before the prom. 
Oh, I put the chicken pox right before the prom, so they had no idea I was going to come to the prom. And I was, I came like the last day my chicken pox went away mm. was was the prom. So I ended up showing up anyway with a couple of, you know, oh, you know, but I could have easily won. But I was best dress. Wow. So, to the, so the tides turned, the tides turned for you. Tides turned. And that's why today, niggas look at me like, Mike, what the fuck you dress like that? Right. Nigga, you don't I know. I believe it's shining and standing the fuck out. My, Pure. my clothing, and, you know, a lot of comedians, I, I, you know, a lot of comedians, I do show a lot of big cars and they go on stage right. with like a t-shirt on or some, right. you know, I'm like, when I go on stage, I want my it's fans to it's know where that money to pay, where that money's going. Mm. Every time I'm on stage, I'm at least wearing fucking seven thousand dollars worth of clothes. Wow! 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 And some in wow. action. It's like, nah, no wow. more action. My action. So, 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 Mike, where, where did the comedy bug come from? Where did that come That's from? That's when it started. So when okay. I finally felt comfortable myself, mm -hmm. is when I started roasting other niggas. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. And I'm like, what the fuck are you wearing? We did. You know, I started clowning people. It happened, happened, happened by default. It happened as a defense it mechanism. By default, man. Get the hell out of here. And you was good at it. I was good at it. You know, I don't, and it, it was so weird. It's like, and believe it or not, I was, I was shy. Not much of shy. I was kind of shy and quiet. But, you know, I would say something. When I said a joke with my accent, it made it even yeah. funnier. Got so, it. nigga, you know, when I roast, let a nigga, any, let a Chinese nigga roast you. You don't laugh, right. fucking laugh at that nigga. Got it. You know? So when I roasted them niggas and me what sounding funny, made a joke and more funny. I'm like, oh shit, let the African nigga do this shit to you. Wow. And then niggas try to roast. So that's just started like late eleventh grade, twelfth grade, I started lighting niggas up. You know, and I remember when I finally got out of high school, I was still working at Domino's. Mm -hmm. And one of my one of my coworkers, he was a delivery guy. He's a delivery guy. And he um he also Worked full time at the Philadelphia Community College as a as an acting teacher. Got he the one that pushed me. He said, "Mike, you, you you funny man. Let me help you. You know, let me help you get on stage. Like you know, go to open mic. So he helped me write my first five minutes. And what? I started open mic in Philly. This is like probably like ninety four. Right so where so where where'd you where'd you hone your skill at? Where was the first place you went? Like in terms of doing it was comedy. comedy works. It was a second and comedy chest works. Okay. But it, yeah, right, right on top of the Middle Eastern restaurant, right at Second and Chestnut. What, what other the first what, place? What, what comments? What comments were there? What other comments were there? Did they welcome oh you God. in? Was, was it? Was it like? Was it like? Was it like a new day? Like new first day of school for you? New was first it like day that? of school. I remember okay. like Kirk Skelton, Timmy Tight, mm -hmm. Kenny Ray Walker. All them niggas are probably dead. Okay. Wow. They're not dead. You know, what I mean, their careers are yeah. dead. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're still alive, but they're dead. Um. <laughs> Oh my God, who was, now let me name people we looked up to back then. Mm. Like guys like Keith yeah. Robbins was one of the, like, he was already a headliner. So I remember that was Wednesday night was the Comedy Works and then, mm -hmm. then I found out Monday night, mm -hmm. the Funny Bone had open mic. Mm -hmm. That's one on South Street, which became Catch a Rising Star. We later on became David Brenner Laugh House, became the Laugh House. So when Got I started it. going to um, Comedy Works, mm -hmm. I mean, Funny Bone, that's when I started, like, you know, that's when I met like, Ralph Harris. Got well, it. Roman Harris. Because Ralph was in Hollywood at that time. Got it. Um, Roman Harris. And um, Keith Robinson used to come up there once in a while. Got uh, it. And then, like, maybe a year or two after me was when we had guys like Ture Gordon. Got it. And then probably, and then now I'm looking at, like, 97-ish. And yeah. then we had, like, Buck Wild. And then a little short nigga named Kevin Hart. Got and it. And then after that. Got it, got it, okay. Then we had so, Kev, and then, mm -hmm. um, damn it. And then, it just from there, it, it, I started going to open mic. I was, now we had open mic two nights a week. We had Monday and Wednesday nights. How long, did, how long did it take you to get a solid five minutes? How long did it take you? Oh, man. A good, not, not long, probably a good two and a half months. Okay. Because what you do, you go, you repeat that same five minutes every fucking week. But so, you knew that. You knew, let me just keep doing the same five minutes. You didn't come you gotta, back with You got to perfect it. Got it. You perfect the five minutes. Then from there, you perfect 10 minutes. Then you perfect got 15 it. minutes. Got After it. 15 minutes, you could go work. Got it. You get a $50 gig. And the got thing about it, it I, I might be wrong because I think after six months into it, mm -hmm. I got my first $50 gig. And I wow. had 15 minutes. So that's wow. why I figured out five minutes, two months. Every two months, you get five minutes. I remember that. 
And I remember, this is how much I take comedy to heart. I remember, and it, it think about comedy, your first night on stage, you could tell mm -hmm. right away if it's for you or not. Wow. Really? You and you tell. fell in love. You fell in love that night. That night, you know, even though back then when we did open mic, especially yeah. at the comedy work, the comedy work was the white comedy club, right. which was really, really strict. If they don't know, when you go sign your name to go on stage, they would line you up by how well they know you. They know you. So you're right. either going to go first when there's barely nobody there, or you're going to go last when there's barely nobody there. So I remember I used to go on like, if they, do, they only accept the first 20 people. So I would go on like around like 18 to 20 every time. Got it. At the comedy works. So by, by the time you get on stage, it's just comedians in the house. And Got all it. the comedians know each other's joke because we say the same fucking five minutes every fucking Got week. it. Got it. By the time we start doing it funny bone on South Street, that was different. That is first come, first serve. So you mm -hmm. get in line. First 20 comedians get in line. And when you get there, you get to sign where you want to perform. So that it'll Oh, really? Right. So the good spot is like between like five to ten is a good wow. spot. So wow. me, mind you, the show is at eight, nine o'clock. Niggas in line at five o'clock to get a good spot. Got it. They try to get down there so they can sign themselves and when they want to sign in. Exactly. Got it. Okay. Got it, got it, got it. Got but that's, got how it. That, that's how that works. So after six months, I remember doing my first show. Mm -hmm. And the first show went good. I'm working, you know, first of first my God thing went good. It's probably the third or fourth time that didn't go that good. I remember, and I'm, I was so disappointed in myself. After I performed, I just laughed. Let me keep that $50. <laughs> I was like, you know, I, that's how I feel, man. Today, like, if I don't give a good show, yeah. I don't even want the fucking money. I don't really think I deserve it. What, what did your, um, how did your mother feel when she found out you was doing comedy? She said, get a job, my nigga. <laughs> she said, mother, mother suck up, go find a job. Or I'm going to go by, oh, you don't know, you're going to be ending with some, some inactions. Some inactions, right. So he said, no, it's a mom. My mom, my mom, she probably... And my mom is very holy than I. She like evangelist. Never since my mom gave her life to Christ. Every when she was thirty years old, mm -hmm. and she's probably seventy-seven now. Got it. You know. Um, Got it. And she, she still she still ain't messing with it. She's never been to no show. No clubs. No. Not drink one alcohol since from since she was thirty years old. She don't go. She don't. My mom don't believe in, in putting herself where God don't want her to be. Got it. Got it. I think I've sent enough for the whole family. <laughs> what um? A, a, so who who um? Who was your like? Who mentored you? Who took you under their wing? Ah, oh, God, nobody. You know what? Nobody. Nobody really did because I got. I think the most fortunate thing that happened to me was mm -hmm. me being an African. Got it. Because I was an African, it made me different than everybody else. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. stood out a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. so it was easy for it was easier for me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so and I, and I, I you know, I, we after we just I, I was just working so hard every day mm -hmm. was getting better. You know, right. like I said, I will not miss an open mic. Got you it. know, I just kept going every time. So you so you were anytime anytime you know a room you was going. It was didn't matter. Every time the audience come wow. on, what, you got you and Jav Javon Pearson. I forgot how I forget Javon. Mm -hmm. He's one of the guys okay. that we looked up to, too, also. Okay. Okay. And I remember when he started doing, like, a, you know, this is actually the first time we started experiencing real black audience. Got it. Was, uh, was the spot you guys used to do at that hotel. Yes, Penn. The, 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 Penn, the University of Penn, the Penn Hotel. The Penn Hotel. The Penn Hotel. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started getting experiencing, like, a real black audience. Because right. Because I remember after I started doing that, yeah. when I started taking trips to New York. Got it. When I started okay. taking trips to New York, in New York, what yeah. I like about New York audience because you doing a comedy club audience, it's like, you know, half white, half black. It's mostly your friends come to see you open mic night. But when mm -hmm. you go do one of the spots in New York, when it's like a mm -hmm. bunch of angry motherfuckers that don't know right. you, don't give a fuck about you, right. you have to come correct. Right, right, so right. So I go to New York on the regular, mm -hmm. and I got to give New York proc, New York made me tough. So you got, you, you got, your, you got your legs. You got your, you got your legs in New York. Oh, yeah, definitely. Got it. Got it. What um uh did, was there ever a time you thought about giving up? Ah, giving up. Mm -hmm. Besides Corona, hysterical. Nigga, I was close to retiring after Corona. <laughs> I started adding on my savings account. I said, okay, if I just if I eat two hot dogs a day and two oodles of noodles, 
I and get some, and get some, and get some inactions. Get some inactions. Some brand new inactions. <laughs> right? Some brand new ones. They gotta be brand, brand new. new ones. Maximum my Versace shirts. <laughs> They're gonna think inaction is inaction. I I calculated everything. I said when Corona happened, let me tell you, I was in the middle of three tours. I was on tour with Martin Lawrence. Right. Doing some dates with Mike Epps. Wow. And on tour with Wildin' Out. Wow. It shut me down. I can't discuss how much money I lost because child support is watching. <laughs> hey Mike, what was your breakthrough moment? Huh? What was your breakthrough moment? When, when uh, did you realize? I, gotta I'm, be in the movie next Friday. Next Friday was my breakthrough moment. Really? After I did next Friday, I remember mm -hmm. we shot that movie. 99, it came out 2000. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was, it was in the very early, I'm not going to urge it. We didn't really have cell phones like that. If you yeah. had cell phones, you have money. In yeah. fact, it was car phone. The shit was mm -hmm. in a car. Mm -hmm. All right. And with me, I remember having those fake ass antenna on my fucking mm -hmm. car mm -hmm. to pretend, let everybody know I had a cell phone. <laughs> and we would right. roll, back then we'll roll out with windows down. Cell phone back then used to cost Two ninety nine a minute. Mm -hmm. So what we did, because if you had a cell phone, it was called car phone. Right, right? car phone. Right, car phone. Right. It cost two dollars and ninety nine cents a minute. Wow. So if you on that phone, it's gonna run your bill. You're a hundred dollars. Right, <laughs> That's right. Funny. That's so funny. what we do sometimes? I remember driving and I roll my windows down, and I would be on the phone. But guess what I'm on the phone with? Nobody. Nobody. Nobody, my nigga. I'm just fronting. <laughs> Nobody. Everybody did I that. I am you, fronting. Cause you, listen, cause listen, you're off peak hours. You got to wait till the off peak hours. You got to wait till the sun go wait, down. Nigga, I couldn't call nobody till after nine, at 9 o'clock. <laughs> Don't call me one. and I'm going to call you, right? <laughs> nigga, 9 to 1, I'm calling all the bitches. Everybody. You can't wait. You like, you like the clock. All right. Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's, what's going, going on, man? Going? Yeah, what's nigga, up, baby? What's up? Talk to me, motherfucker. <laughs> right. I know talk you got to nothing me. to say. This is free right now. Talk to me, please. Mike, how how did you master master manipulating the internet to grow your brand, your fan base? How'd you do that? How'd you how'd you what, how'd you realize I'm saying this is where I'm going to go? I'm going to go there and I'm going to master this because you already could do stand up because a lot of a lot of comics and I don't know if you agree on internet comics, they really can't get down live. You already had, you already had that down. How did you master that to manipulate, the, again, the internet to grow your brand to what it is? Probably going back to doing what I hated them doing to me. Like, you know, how back when I first came from Africa, mm -hmm. how the kids clown me, mm -hmm. it hurt my feelings. I had to defend myself and try to, it, it was painful then. I brought that back. I allowed them to make fun of me. I remember when wow. I first went on Twitter, Wow. 2009 when Twitter started, right? I'm on, and, and I was I was a little bit late to Twitter. Hello, me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. On, I was late to Twitter, right? Mm -hmm. But by the time I got on Twitter, Kev was already like popping on Twitter. D. Ray yeah. Davis, Lil Duval, Marlon Wayans, right? This is like 2009, 2010. Them guys mm -hmm. got Twitter unlocked, and I was like, I wasn't trying to fuck with it. I was happy with my 5,000. Facebook followers. Got it. 5,000. you good. Everybody, I'm, I'm balling. You can't go past 5,000. I'm balling. Right. I'm balling. I said, I got 5,000 niggas following me. I'm, you know, I got a house. Right. A car. 5,000 followers. And, and you, you, listen, and you could afford a lifetime of inactions if you wanted them. If I, if I make a movie today, I know 5,000 niggas will watch it. Right? But then, Absolutely. Like, so, Moses, one of my um, my role managers, he said, Mike, you have to get on this thing on Twitter. You got to get on Twitter. So mm. I got on Twitter. All these niggas are already popping on Twitter. Mm. By the time I got on there, I was so late to Twitter, some nigga already got Michael Black. Hey, Michael Black. Oh, this yeah. nigga was already me. He was a better me than me. <laughs> this nigga talking. Dude, you, said, my, you, said Michael, you said Michael Black is interesting. He's very interesting. He's entertaining. I'm like, who is this nigga? Nigga. I'm like, me and you are the same nigga. <laughs> This nigga was he had sixty thousand followers. That's a lot back then. He yeah. was already making money because you could make money back then on Twitter. Mm, this nigga yeah. got sixty thousand followers. Ask my at Michael Blackson, talking about mother sucker pump B. Can't get jiggy <sighs> with it. Doing all my lines. Oh my goodness. 
So I, I sent the nigga's message. I'm a nigga, who are you? <laughs> I, I'm the real Michael Blackson. If you are Michael Blackson, then who am who I? Who the fuck am I? <laughs> uh, who am my I? servant, Simi. My, my servant, Simi. <laughs> then nigga, I, I felt like Billy Vanilli. <laughs> oh, my All right, goodness. so funny, I say, you know what? So I, I, I got a name. I, I changed it to, like, the real Michael Blackson, something like that. Got and it. then I started, I started a lot of people to roast me on Sundays. Yeah. I said, Sunday is like Roast Michael Day. So you ro everybody roast me, I retweet it. And then, um, and then I, kept, I kept talking on Twitter, like, hey, listen, man, this guy using my name, I need my name back. I need right. my shit back, you know. Right. So I remember um, first I had to send proof of, like, with a Peter Cat account just to prove that who mm -hmm. I was. Mm -hmm. And I was able to get my name from this nigga. And then when they get my name, I got verified on Twitter. Mm. And then I kept reaching out. I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to, I'm reaching out like D-Ray Davis, all them niggas do, trying to roast. Only, nobody answering me, right? <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get some of those followers. Nobody answering me. I'm like, hello, nigga, how you see me on the road? We work together. I and you don't know me. Media, you don't know who I am. You don't know me, right. That's funny. All them niggas that will not answer me, guess what? Pass all them niggas. Wow. Duval, fucking D-Ray Davis, all them, I got more followers than all them niggas, okay? Wow. You know who answered me? Mm. You know who answered me and followed me on Twitter? Ooh. Ooh. Kevin fucking hot. Wow. Kev answers me. Me and Kev roast the shit out of each other. Mm. My God, I gained like 50,000 followers that day. Wow. After Kev answered, now everybody want to answer now. Wow. All of a sudden now, D-Ray want to roast me. <laughs> so I'm going back and forth with D-Ray. I'm going back and forth with Marlon every day. Me and Tom, uh, um, Terry Crews used to roast each other every day. Wow. And that's where it started. That's what happened. Wow. That's where my social media started. So wow. I remember um, I remember Walter Latham, who was mm -hmm. um, the producer of Kings of yes. Comedy. Yes, Kings of Comedy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. He saw what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was around that time where YouTube gave out like $5 million to like like five different producers. Right. I know Walter Latham got one and he had his own network, like a YouTube network. Shaq got one because Shaq had a network. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, and it was, the first comedy, those were the two. I don't know what, who else got what, right? So Walter hit me up and said, hey, Mike, I like what you're doing. I want you, I want to give you a show on the network. Mm. You know, on his YouTube network. Got he it. said, come up with a show idea. You know, something. Got it. Got it. So, um, so I came up with this show called Black Friday, pretty much. I yeah. sat on my couch every Friday. I actually shot this on Thursday night. I shoot it Thursday night every Friday morning. Got it. It was a show by me, sit on my couch, figure out everything that happened that week, and make fun of everything that fucked up that week. Wow. It's called Black Friday. You can still go on YouTube right now and look up that show. Still there, still there. And the nigga, this is my first time getting paycheck online, like an online paycheck. Mm. He paid me 50 grand a year. Mm. I mean, from making no money on social media to like, I didn't know. 50 grand a year. YouTube, 50 wow. grand a year. I said, like, yes, motherfucker, I would do whatever I need me to do for 50 grand. <laughs> what did you need me to do? I don't, I don't have to leave my house. I could sit home on my couch wow. and make $50,000 a year. Wow. That's and amazing. That's how, but so the show I did, I mean, almost every episode, like a three to five minute show, every episode was viral. Why'd every, you stop it? Because the check, the check stopped. <laughs> when money stopped, no job, stopped you stop. <laughs> no, I did it for like. I did it for you like said, I'm not so years. funny no more. I'm not so funny no more. Money stopped. I'm not right, man. Just money make me so much funnier. So, Mike, you are you are you are essentially. Would you agree? You essentially are the African internet Hugh Hefner. Would you? Would you? That be a fair assessment? We have to. You have to ban that shit on COVID nineteen, my nigga. I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> COVID has turned me into a pimp <laughs> in the I blame it on COVID. You, think, you know the funny thing about it? I could quit comedy right now and, and probably live. make a hundred grand a month. Wow. Being a hub. How right. did you, how'd you become, how'd you become, somebody told me to ask you this question. How'd you become, this is, this is not me, a female told me to ask you this question. How'd you, how'd you successfully become a sex symbol, but you're not sexy? This is what she said. 
it's not a fe I hope it's a girl that asked you this. It's a female. It's a female. A female told me that. Yeah. That means she found me sexy. Is that what it was? Okay. I, I'm saying she I didn't found know. me sexy. I she didn't said, know, how did man. I become sexy without And you're not sexy. She said he's not sexy. He's funny, but he's not sexy. You know what I mean? But women love him though. They said women love you, man. You know what it is? You're funny. Women love funny. They love funny. No, I think I'm sexy. Do you, who? Sexy is not always got to do with look. You could come okay. like a lot okay. of ugly niggas. I think we're sexy <laughs> in our own way. So you call yourself ugly. You're self-proclaimed ugly dude. Listen to me. As long as, uh -huh. as, long as the internet thing. The check clear. Ugly, I'm going to Let the check clear. Let the check clear. It don't matter. Listen to me. As long as the internet feels I'm ugly, I would become rich. I can't. I'm not. I'm not gonna be a. Pretty boys don't make no internet money. No, they don't. Don't. They don't. Listen, they don't. I'm very ugly. <laughs> no, no, no. You know what the fuck? My name is Michael Black, saying and I'm ugly. I am ugly. Please, I'm. I'm but ugly, ugly, ugly. You say ugly, is it, but you say ugly is a new cute. That's what you Nigga, say. I'm ugly. I'm, <laughs> I'm closer to ugly than cute. Okay. The thing about it. I'll be at my show, girls will come to me after the show, like, you look so much better in person. I'm like, please, I'm going to stay ugly on the internet. Don't tell nobody I'm, don't tell nobody I'm cute. It's going to fuck up my money. Let me tell you why ugly niggas make money. Okay? Uh -huh. Go ahead. This is why every show I do sells out across the country. Uh -huh. Men feel comfortable to bring, bring their to see you. ugly niggas yeah. me. Wow. Because I'm not going to take their bitch. But they don't know that you will. They have no idea <laughs> that if they left the woman alone with me, she would end up with two blood infections <laughs> and hysterectomy, okay? But as long as I am ugly, they would bring uh -huh. the women to see me. They're going to pay, they gonna pay you their money? They're going to pay. Gonna pay like, the check won't clear. Nigga. I'm not worrying about You never see no guy take, ain't no guy taking a girl to go see no fucking Chris Brown. Uh, come on, boo, let's go see no, Chris no Brown. Dude, no dude ain't doing it. No dude How ain't doing it. Do they, it? Buy, they buy, they buy, they buy, yes, you, you getting two tickets sold. They, he bought a ticket for his girl, him and his girl. Is that, let me tell you, exactly. I'm selling two tickets. Wow. wow. Right. So all wow. the niggas feel very comfortable. They're like, let's go see this ugly nigga. That's the first thing to say. Who That's what they say. That ugly nigga? They drop, they drop it. What you doing tonight? I'm going to go see this ugly. Look this ugly ass nigga. He had the funny bone tonight. <laughs> Check out the ugly nigga. He had the oh. fucking Leah Cool Center. Mike, so you, listen, so. I was talking to you at the time. We was we was conversation. I think actually, I think I actually, um, I think I texted you. I was like, Mike, they're shooting coming to America too. Yeah. You got to get in it. And next thing I know, I see Eddie on TMZ, and they ask him about you. You're doing coming to America too. You got to have an authentic African in there. Who you like? And he gives you the he gives you the Ali Oop, the cosign, the love of all loves from the king, the king, okay, of comedy. Yeah. Tell me about that. Tell me where you were at. Tell me how you felt about that. And I know that you actually resisted, and people don't know that. You got in the movie, but you didn't want to audition for the movie. Tell me about that. Oh, God. So let me see. I, I did it started. Um, I, I think um, TNZ asked Rental Acon. Mm -hmm. TNZ Rental Acon about, mm -hmm. you know, hey, Eddie Murphy's going to come to America too. How do you feel about it? He mm -hmm. said, well, I think, um, I think they need to, you know, cast real Africans in this movie. Mm -hmm. Just throw some Africans in here, you know. And then right. TMZ ran into right. Eddie, and of course, Eddie co-signed and mentioned my name. Let me tell you, once Eddie mentioned my name, I, I felt like I made it. Whether the I get this movie or the not, my name coming out of his mouth? My the only name. Up. No, I the only Eddie name. My name. The only name. Huh? The only, the only name. name he mentioned. He mentioned you no know, one else's name ever. Here's the thing: the, re the reason I didn't want to audition for that movie, I've never been a I've never been a fan of auditions. I think auditions are so culturally biased, like you know, because it's like you go audition for a movie, okay? You go mm -hmm. audition for a movie is the casting director is probably this white lady most of the time. Right. They right. have no clue who you are and what you're capable of bringing to this table. They have right. no idea what a millions of fan base you have. What you could bring to this movie. Wow. All they're looking for is that perf you saying these lines perfectly. Wow. You being this perfect actor. Don't know that people fuck up so much auditions. Us, you could never be perf auditions is the easiest place to fuck up. Wow. So you, you so, you don't, so you don't want to audition for anything. Um, 
No, I don't. Got it. And I think once it comes to America, come, I don't want to do this for anything. I don't. If I don't fit the part, just move on. It's not for me. It's Got not it. because I want to eventually, I want to do my own projects. I want to do stuff that caters me, my character. And I know what my fans like. I know what they like, and I'm going to give them what they want. Got you it. know? I, don't and, they come, and they come in because they, they know what they're going to get from you. Exactly. Got it. I'm going to get all my fans some brand new in action. Got it. Hustler. Brand what was new. Like, what brand was it like working with Eddie? Oh, my God. So, um, and, you know, I was on set talking to Eddie. You know, like I, was, I told some people earlier, they're going to see me three times in this movie. Like, and it's one moment that I have my moment. And as a comedian, that's all you care about. That's all you need, you need a moment. Just like next Friday, I had that one moment. You got it. I had one only moment, and I had it, and I went up there. And till today, that's, the movie's 20 years old. Yeah. And I could live, I could live probably almost the rest of my life as an intro from next Friday, Michael Blackson. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Because of that one scene that I took and made it my own. Yeah, I can't get jiggy with this. And that's what I did with Coming to America. So the movie, the, the script is so wonderful. Shout out to the writer. Shout out to the director. Kenya, 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 Kenya Barris. Kenya Barris. Kenya Barris. God, great job. And, you know, um, I was on set with Eddie and uh, our senior. And, they, and, they, and they, when they, they told me, the president told me that. They said, when we read that script, when we saw these lines, this part right here, right. we had you in mind for them. Wow. Wow. Yeah, and I'm glad Africa. I did. I'm glad you came I from Africa. Huh? You came from Africa. You went. To, listen, you came from Africa. You mm -hmm. went to Jersey. You were taunted. You were ridiculed. You went. Yes, I'm saying. And you came to Philadelphia. You got you some inactions. You had your brand new, the brand new inactions, right? Brand church, new, brand, brand new church pants, church shirt. Yeah. Yes. You get a job at 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 at, at, the, at Domino's. You go to Bartram. You're fronting like that's what I'm saying, like you're a drug dealer because they think you're Jamaican. You actually go and you start comedy. You start comedy, yes, what I'm saying, and you make your way to actually becoming this comic, yes, stand up, great stand up. You nurture it on the internet, and then you get an opportunity that Eddie Murphy mentions your name on TMZ. The, the, the crazy thing about Eddie Murphy, the first, he was the first comedian I saw, period. Like, I remember, like, the first thing I saw was like Raw. And I'm, after I saw Raw, and I started looking for everything Eddie did, from like, you know, Delirious and uh, Beverly Hill Cops. And this guy was like my first funny hero. Right. And then, then, 30 years later, I get to work with this guy. That's crazy. It's crazy. Tell you something right now. If my career ended today, I say, Lord Jesus, I've done it all. You know what I'm saying? I've done the greatest, it the greatest, the greatest compliment you received today. The greatest compliment you received from who? Oh, it had a been it had a been on set where it, when Eddie told me, he's like, "Man, I've been watching, I've been checking you out. You doing your thing, and we when this those scene we wrote, that scene was for you." That's I said, "You know what? I don't. It don't matter right now. I don't. I don't. I could come on and major be fucking my wife unprotected sex. I will not give a fuck. Have a good time, huh?" Have a I'm good like, time. You know Have a good time, okay? <laughs> In fact, get another midget, put a train on this bitch because my life is complete. Your Mount, your, your Mount Rushmore, what is it? My what? Your Mount Rushmore, what is it? What's my, my Mount Rushmore? What do you mean by that? Your Mount Rushmore. It's four great human beings, I'm saying, in your life that inspired you. Who your, who's your top four comics? Put it like that. Four top comics. Uh, Eddie always number one. I always say that to the day, Eddie always been my guy. Okay. You know, because when I came to America, I didn't know, I kind of missed the Richard Pryor era. Okay. I came during the Eddie era. So okay. when I found out about Eddie and I heard, okay, they said, there's a greater guy than him, Richard Pryor. So I started studying Richard. Big fan of Richard Pryor, rest in peace, love them. I got a little disappointed when I found that nigga sucked a dick. You know, he mentioned sucking a dick. I got a little disappointed. But besides that, Hello? I'm here. <laughs> OK. Um, so Richard Pryor, I think he's the greatest of all time. You know, when he admitted to sucking a dick, I, he went down to number four. <laughs> what, what number? He, seven. He down to seven now. <laughs> Fuck. God damn it, Richard Pryor. God damn, nigga. No. So Eddie, Eddie's number one. You got three more. Eddie's number one. 
Um, I love Chris Rock. Chris Rock's too. Yeah, Chris Rock is my dog. Chris, Chris Rock's is too. too. You know, Chris would give you a special every eight years and every special, you're like, God damn, this nigga is incredible. He's also been doing, I mean, this guy been grinding for so long. Mm -hmm. I respect his grind. I mean, he yeah. did a lot of, I mean, Pooty Tang, of course, CB4. Right. You know, he kind of remind me, he, I'm like of a you. low budget, I'm like a low budget Chris. Of Rock. you. Yeah, you. Exactly. Right. He remind me of me with millions of dollars of less money. Exactly. exactly. Me with something. He's Chris. He reminds me of me with in actions. <laughs> oh, him with, you know what the fuck I mean. So we got Chris Rock. You got two more. You got two more. You got two more. Chris Rock, Eddie Murphy. Uh, uh, let me see. I got to go. I just did that recently. Let me see. Uh, I got to go with Bernie Mac. Bernie Mac, three. Okay, one more. Chris Rock, Eddie Murphy, Chris Rock, Bernie Mac, your fourth one. Uh, God, I never thought about the fourth one. Because whenever they ask me, like, who's your top four comics, I always name myself number four. Well, Only okay, because of where yeah, I came from. That's all right, though. But that's, that's all right. That's all right. That's cool. That's Only because of where I came from. America, let me tell you something. In this world, oh, Dave Chappelle, that's the guy. You've achieved, that's what it was. You, you've achieved the American, American dream. I really, so Dave right. Chappelle, I think, and these are, I'm, I'm named guys that grinded for years. Right. Dave Chappelle is, is that person. Is, Dave Chappelle is the person I was thinking about. Is, was it is top four? That's four. That's four. Okay. So, so I got so uh, Last one before I let you go. Bernie, Chris, last Dave Chappelle. Before, yeah, last one before I let you go. Give me your top five comics from Philly. Oh, of course. Kev, that'd be number one. Okay. I mean, yeah. Kevin broken all kinds of records. Made so much. Now, this one that you, I just wanted you know. I just wanted you to know. I just wanted you to know. Jamal does this every night, and I'll be honest with you. If he interviewed thirty comics from Philly, you've been on probably twenty nine of the list as a top five. So just so you know that. Okay. Just want to get that. Okay, but again, so okay, so Kev is number one. Kev got to be number one. I Four think more. I got to be number two. Two. Okay. Um, from Philly, right? Yep. Three more, three more. Any more comedians left? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I got to I gotta give it to Keith Robinson. Three. I think Keith paved the way for a lot of, like, I know he helped Kev out a lot. Three. I got to give Keith Robinson some love. Three. I got to give, um, unless it's guys that I don't know, I got to give Ralph Harris. He was one of the first guys from Philly that got a TV show. Four. One more. Um, one more person, Philly. I was somebody in my fucking mind and I fucking forgot who it was. God damn it. For a particular <laughs> reason. God damn. I think the rest of them, let me see. Kev. Kev, Steve. you. Kev, you. Um, uh, Keith Robinson and, um, and Robin, Robin. Oh, and I got, I got to get, uh, Jim, I got to get Javon Pearson. Javon Pearson. I got to get, only because, I got to get with Javon because Javon was one of those guys too that, he was one of the first urban guys that came from Philly. He's the first one to do like the Dev Jam from Philly. To he did do all Apollo. That. He did it all. First he did it all. Up out here. He did it all. He, he did, did it all. all. He was on every on, that's, the, that's the name. That's the fact. Hey, Mike, I love you, man. It's been fun, you man. Love you, baby. I love you too, homie. Bam. I'm going to I'm I'm take, take the makeup off, man. This shit was tough. <laughs> Appreciate you, my nigga. It was fun, baby. It was fun. Yeah. It was fun. All right. It was fun. Hey, listen. I love you all. Hopefully y'all enjoyed yourself. Hey, listen, it's been a wonderful, wonderful. I want to thank Michael Blackston, Deion Cole, Kevin Hart. I want to thank you all. It's been amazing. It's been wonderful, wonderful. Monday we have Rev Run, Justine Simmons. We have um, we have uh, 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 Chris and Vanessa uh, Spencer. Monday night. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Charlie Max, brotherly love to be back again. Holla at me, peace.